Um, no, it's not in Egypt, but it, I mean, I, I guess after a few years, but you know, yeah. uh, what I always tell young entrepreneurs is that uh, the customer's money is better than the investor's money. Because if you're getting the customer's money and you're getting it at a price that's higher than your cost and you're getting it repeatedly from the same customer, right? It means you probably have a viable business as long as you can get enough customers. Correct. And if you get the customer's money, uh, the investor's money will almost certainly follow because investors love to invest behind businesses that are getting the customer's money, right? On the other hand, if you get the investor's money first, it does not necessarily mean that the customer's money will follow. So the customers are doing you a favor. Customer values is money, right? So the customer is not your uncle, not your aunt, not your father, not your mother. He's just somebody who's out there looking for something that will satisfy his or her need. And if he's bought from you twice, it means that it worked the first time, right? But getting the investor's money, you know, it's about impressing a few people across the table with your PowerPoint. And that's not the same thing as getting a customer to buy you twice. So if you get the customer's money, the investor's money will, will probably follow. The investor's money, the customer's money need not follow. As long as you can convince people for the next round. So right. we value the customer money a lot. And that's what right. I tell young entrepreneurs to do. Uh, of course, that necessarily means that you will uh, bootstrap, you will, uh, you know, you, you will try and get some customers, you will cut your quote according to your cloth, all those things. Okay. Uh, but a lot of people don't think that way. And that's fine. Right, right, right. Old yeah. company, uh, yeah. you know, if we, if you go back in time, if I leave out the IPO and the QIP dilutions uh, and the VC dilution, so what a chart dilution went, which has been significant. There was a VC dilution uh, in, in 2000. There was an IPO in 2006. There was a QIP in 2014. Abhi recently QIP here, a couple of months, a month or so back. You know, to do out these four dilutions and just go back to what the company used to be, we have given away around 35% of the company to people who made it happen. So there was a point in time in 96, 97 when I owned 100% of this company. But we gave away 35% to people who made it happen. And if this company is standing where it is, it's because, partly because of, of that, that you have to be willing to share ownership wealth, empowerment, credit, you know, all those things. But otherwise, smart people will not stay. And you will not be able to attract smart people. And if you have a you will Correct. 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 But at the same time, you you should you should be scaling so fast that you should be able to give them the valuation of the ESOPs or whatever you give. What you are not able to give them is so. What I always believe is that uh, look, uh, in the long run, you'll be valued of a profit multiple. Sure. Right. So scaling unprofitable top line is not something that we have chased ever. Uh, you should be scaling fast, yes, but both top line and at some point of time, uh, bottom line. Right. Because right. you want to build a great company, it's the effort of a lifetime for some people. You and a few others. Right? right. Uh, so if you look at uh, Microsoft, effort of a lifetime for Bill Gates and his compatriots. Uh, look at Apple, effort of, effort of a lifetime for Steve Jobs and a few others. You look at Google, launched in 98, they're still at it, 22 years. Look at Facebook, 15 years. So uh, if you want to build a great company and an institution that perhaps outlives you, you have to devote your life to it. There are no quick fixes and short-run solutions. And also you said that and you should ultimately, not ultimately, And ultimately all great companies are profitable. Right. And you're not greatly a profitable. And the promoters have often not sold. I mean, they have built it and uh, built it and run it for decades. Yeah, that's right. Right. I think, first of all, you've got to understand the consumer and the customer really well. And get that insight that tells you, if I build this, I know it will sell. Mm -hmm. I know the customer will want it. So, so you start with the customer. Mm. But very quickly, you come to your people. 
Mm-hmm. So ultimately, you have to do it with people. Right, right. And right. A, a great entrepreneur is always very good at building trust across the tables. Whether it's with colleagues, whether it's with investors, whether it's with customers, whether it's with whoever you meet. Mm-hmm. You have to build trust across the table. And to build and to build trust across the table, you've got to be trustworthy. Now, trustworthiness means uh, integrity, humility, a sense of fairness, all those things. Right? And these are things you probably either already have or you'll never get. Right. If fundamentally you're not honest by now, uh, chances are you're not suddenly turn honest. Right, right. I think uh, the entrepreneurs, uh, you know, the secret of success of many, many entrepreneurs is, uh, is persistence. You see, uh, for 10 years, we bootstrapped after I quit my job. For 10, in those 10 years, I did seven, eight, 10 different things. They were all small ideas. When we launched Nokri, it was one more small idea. But if you keep at it long enough, now I could have quit anytime and gone back to a job, right? But then I would have been a failed entrepreneur. But because I kept trying, I was simply not successful yet. And you keep trying, you know, and if you're smart enough and if you're good enough, I think uh, sooner or later good things will happen. So I think one big thing is to, after clarity of thought, is uh, keep trying. Don't give up. Right, right. The the second, is, the yeah. se- second is, look, until you sort of, uh, it looks like you can succeed. It's important to be very frugal. Keep your costs low. Be frugal. Then no matter how little revenue you're getting, you're still breaking even. Correct. 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 In fact, we have also made a lot of mistakes when we, we were in that uh, you know, speed of scaling up. You typically increase a lot of your cost and suddenly the, the revenues don't come in. You start uh, scaling down. And then uh, you make hell out of mistakes. Yeah, so scaling down is a very, I found it very difficult. You're actually letting go of people, asking them to go. It's very, very traumatic. Yeah. Therefore, yeah. So we've never ever uh, sacked on account of a downturn. Right? In 2009, we didn't do it. Uh, in uh, Abhi, with this uh, COVID, we've not done it. We believe it scars the organization. At the end of the day, we are all in this together and we'll figure it out. Right, right. So how do you handle that situation? Because a lot of these young guys will also be listening to this. And yes, uh, if you have money in your bank account, you can manage it. But what if you don't have? So I'll tell you. uh, It's because we built the product that we did that we were able to charge the prices that we do that we are able to earn the margins that we do and get 100% advance, that we have the luxury of being able to do this and go through difficult periods uh, without second people. Right? So it comes back to how much value are you adding to your clients for your clients? What is the quality of the product that you've built? You build better products, which are more badly needed. You build more unique products, differentiated products. You build IP around them. You will get your terms of trade and your prices. Right? And you'll have the luxury of doing all this. So focus on building better products. And in some cases, when you don't have the luxury, like for example, in the entertainment business today, during the COVID, there are some certain world-class companies which are still there in India. They had to scale down majorly because there was no then, light. Do it with some humility. Do it with some, uh, you know, give them as soft landing as possible. Right. Try and help them find placement elsewhere. When good times come back, hire your former employees first. That's a very, very interesting.